come to another question. How did you find uh, the foreign policy of this new leadership as compared to uh, those of 27 years? Uh, because you always uh, accuse uh, Abiy Ahmed's leadership of foreign policy of not being uh, Ethiopia centered, Africa centered, blah, blah. Mm. Uh, how do you define that? It's because uh, it's not uh, Africa centered. Mm. It's, sim it's as simple as that. I mean, you know, the, 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 in the first place, I'm not sure if the PP leadership has a foreign policy at all. Mm. Foreign policy is about defining the national interest and finding a way, strategies and tactics mm. of promoting that national interest. So what are Ethiopia's national interests? Abi wouldn't tell you. So making friends with, with um, every leader, for him means making friends on a personal level. For example, the Prime Minister made ridiculous remarks to diplomats that he was working on the mediation effort between Korea and uh, Japan. Mm. I mean, this would have, would have, would have sounded like um, a sick joke. Uh, but he said it in earnest. Uh, he went to Egypt to make peace with Egypt. And I remember discussions in uh, the executive committee of the ruling party, the Zen ruling party. He was telling us, Egyptians are not our enemies anymore. Oh, but we have never said they were our enemies, but there was a clear un misunderstanding on the part of the Egyptian establishment, political establishment, to consider Ethiopia as their arch enemy. So, so he, he, would, he wanted us to believe that uh, Egypt was now 100% uh, in favor of Ethiopia's uh, right to develop and all that. Mm -hmm. So he, make, he made all kinds of wrong choices of venue, wrong choices of friends and everything. Because it's not about whether or not he was capable, uh, capable or not capable of diplomatic skills or not. That's, that's secondary. Mm -hmm. That's probably relevant. Diplomacy is first and foremost about articulating your own interest, the national interest of the country. And of course, once you articulate the national interest of the country, and whatever relationship you are going to establish should be a function of whether or not that national interest is going to be promoted through that relationship, okay? So if someone, one country stands in the way of the, the promotion of my national interest, and then I would have to deal with it as an enemy, not as a perpetual enemy, but to the extent that it is going to stand, its behavior is going to stand in the way of my national interest, and then I have to deal with it accordingly. So, uh, second, one has to have a policy. To do diplomacy, one has to have a, a clear policy. The first 27 years of, of, of uh, 1991, the most important thing that was done was there was a clear policy. So. It defined the national interest of the country, and it defined uh, lack of democracy and uh, poverty as a twin challenge that, that uh, threatened the very survival of the Ethiopian state. And all our di di diplomatic activities, all our foreign relations activities were geared towards addressing the two challenges, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what, what are the priorities? You tell me you're very good friends with Egypt, you tell me you abandon your African brothers and then you allow your case to be mediated by the World Bank and the uh, Treasury Secretary of the United States. It's not even normal for the Treasury Secretary to, to, to be involved in diplomatic activities on behalf of the United States. It was an agenda that was absolutely mind-boggling because I, I, as, as an Ethiopian leader, he should have known better than abandoning the African f African forums mm -hmm. and shopping for other venues which you expect will help, help you ingratiate yourself with the big wigs of Western Western leaders. That's, that's, that's secondary. Abi's focus should have been dealing with poverty in this country. 
Yeah, but, but what do you mean by abandoning African friends? Uh, Look, to the extent that mm. Egypt and Sudan and Ethiopia had issues, mm. the forum was either the trilateral arrangement or the cooperative framework agreement or the AU or you know another African institution. The eight-year peace deal was signed in Jeddah. Mm. Uh, in fact, uh, the uh, leaders of the Saudi government were uh, were uh, gracious enough to invite Paul Kagame, the then uh, chairperson of African Union, to come and join them for the celebrations. And in Saudi, in Saudi, Saudi. Mm. and it was strange because uh, a peace deal between two African countries, which was essentially a headache that has been a headache for, to, to the Af African Union for m more than 20 years, was being addressed not by the African Union, but by Saudi and United Arab Emirates. So while he was pondering <coughs> whether to participate in that, um, in that forum, in fact, President Isaias uh, decided that uh, he would abandon the Jeddah uh, forum mm -hmm. uh, if Kagame also was invited, so he doesn't. He didn't want President Kagame to to, to, to be there. So the Saudis had to disinvite. In other words, in other words the African Union. Yes, mm. I mean Ethiopia has been a beacon of hope for Africa for 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 very good reasons. Ethiopia under Mengistu, Ethiopia under Haile Selassie, Ethiopia under Melazena, more importantly, was the pride of Africa. We could have our own, so many failings, but uh, when it comes to the issue of Africa, uh, we have a very stellar record. But for uh, an Ethiopian leader to not even inform IGAD, by the way, it was IGAD which decided to sanction, to impose sanctions on Eritrea. Eritrea. It's unprecedented in the history of Africa. Mm. African Union imposed sanctions on, on its, its members. It's unprecedented in its history. Mm because of its recalcitrant behavior. And of course, it was the decision, the unanimous decision of the African Union, IGAD, which then won, 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 won um, uh, the day in the United Nations Security Council as well. So er er Eritrea was sanctioned by the United Nations Security Council, and it was a consistent effort by IGAD and AU. And to the extent that there was a progress in the peace process between Ethiopia and Eritrea, it should have concerned IGAD and AU more than it did concern uh, the Emirates or uh, Saudi Arabia. So uh, you see, it's, it, 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 it's very painful in the sense that these are not things that should be considered lightly because uh, everything we, we do, we do it in consultation with African brothers, with our African brothers. Uh, you, IGAD, they, they, because the president says, uh, doesn't have the appetite <coughs> to countenance whatever efforts of IGAD. He, he wants to skirt IGAD and he wants to create a sort of a Horn of Africa feder confederation of Somalia, Ethiopia, and uh, Eritrea. Well, the strangest thing is three of the leaders do not have dependable gra gra grip on their domestic constituencies, but they, they want to create a facade of strong leadership at regional level. That, of course, is uh, being done at the expense of uh, IGAD. And uh, th this is, is a betrayal of the very values that has informed Ethiopia's foreign relations for the last 70, 80 years, uh, honestly. The focus should be on your neighbors. You focus on your domestic stability and then your neighbors and it is your good rapport with your neighbors that will translate into a very good relationship with others as well. If you're, if you're not in, at peace with your neighbors, no amount of uh, praise from the American Congress or the American Senate is going to, going to help you in running your, your, your government, the affairs of your people. So uh, yeah, it's, it's an absolute failure. For one thing, there is no policy. Uh, for another, uh, well, the skill is secondary, like I said, in fact, irrelevant. Um, I know he'll, he, the leader lacks the skills, but that, that's, that's irrelevant.
<laughs> as long as you have the, the, you have a policy that articulates the national interest of the country, you know what sort of relationships to establish, what sort of um, uh, friendships to, to 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 promote, and all that. But that's missing. Now we have a situation where Ethiopia's uh, national interest is be, being decided upon in Washington, not in Addis Ababa or in Khartoum. <laughs> That's that's a travesty. Mm -hmm. uh, it's known that uh, the central government has uh, postponed the sixth uh, general election. Uh, of course, you were uh, talking about that previously, uh, but TPLF has uh, taken a different path, right? You have announced in the past recent days that you will hold uh, your own election at regional state level. Yes. Right? Do you have legal ground to do so? Yes. It's, it's not a, an How issue of technicality. Mm -hmm. Election, the right to elect, to vote, is people's substantive right. Mm -hmm. It cannot be sacrificed in the altar of bureaucratic expediency. Mm -hmm. The National Electoral Board is an institution which is established to honor the demands of the regions, the peoples. The nations and nationalities have have uh, the right to to, to self-government, right? Mm. So that right to self-government cannot be sacrificed in the altar of national electoral board's expediency. Mm. That's the most important issue. The constitution gives us recognize my right to 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 hold elections. Okay. Mm. So if uh, the federal authorities now come up with all sorts of excuses to unconstitutionally prolong their, their, uh, their, uh, their term of office. And then we should not allow this, that reckless decision to militate against the self-government rights of our people. Mm. So it is incumbent upon us to make sure that that self-government right of the, the people of Tigray is maintained in the face of uh, looming crisis that obviously uh, is going to, is likely to deal a mortal blow to the constitutional order itself. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead with elections. It is more than a matter of technicality. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not about uh, engaging in the kind of uh, flimsy legal interpretation exercises that uh, preceded uh, PP's uh, illegal uh, extension of uh, power last week. So we'll uh, hold elections because ele the right to elections are substantive rights that cannot be sacrificed in the interest of this or that uh, bureaucratic um, institution. That's, that's the most important one we should have. And more importantly, if we can hold elections with all the necessary measures, with all the necessary precautions needed to, to prevent against uh, the coronavirus pandemic, because it's done in many parts of the, the world, mm -hmm. why would it be the head of the federal government? Mm -hmm. Why should it be the head of the federal government? What exactly, what interest, constitutional, substantive interest is going to be affected to such an extent that the prime minister comes out swinging and threatening to use power, force against Tigray or any other region that wants to hold elections. And it's unheard of. I mean, you know, for one thing, Abiy came to power being touted as a reformer. Mm -hmm. Every Western capital touted him as, as a reformer. And it, it, it would sound very strange for a so-called reformer to, 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 to treat and use of force against a, a region that simply uh, decides to hold, to go ahead with the elections. Elections are uh, one uh, aspect of the reform. So, uh, frame fair elections are one aspect of the reform. Are we uh, uh, purportedly uh, undertook when he came to office? 
Now it's it's kind of strange because why would you treat it to use force if at all it was possible? Uh, well, 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 that will whether or not there is going to be use of force. Let's cross the bridge when we come to it. But it is strange for a leader, like I said, who is touted as a reformer, to use to 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 treat the use of force against a region that that uh, simply says it will go ahead with elections. It is, it's very strange. Uh, will go ahead with elections. Mm -hmm. My guess, it's my my piece of uh, the piece of my. I mean, I, I'm just going to share a piece of advice. Mm -hmm. Here is maybe uh, the, the the PP leader is more worried about whether or not he has absolute control over each and every part of the country. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have absolute, absolute control over uh, Oromia, I know, for a fact, because Oromia mostly is under a command post. He doesn't have absolute control over the South, I know, for a fact. It's under, uh, whether he has absolute control, uh, but at least he has absolute control over who controls the state houses in every region. So he gets to pick the regional presidents of Somali, he gets to pick the regional president of uh, the South. He gets to pick the regional president of Oromia and all that. The only person he didn't get to pick, pick get to pick is the regional president of Tigray. And that, that, uh, that uh, doesn't sit well with his authoritarian uh, uh, ambitions. Mm -hmm. And it's very unfortunate that he has authoritarian amb ambitions. It's, it's equally unfortunate that Tigray is not going to countenance uh, such overtures by 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 uh, the PP or uh, the leader of the PP himself. Now the point is, if he thinks holding elections is going to make him feel weak, he's wrong. Mm -hmm. His strength doesn't emanate from whether he appears to be strong while addressing the public on TV. That's a different story. His strength should emanate from whether or not he's capable of ensuring peace and stability in Oromia, in Amhara, in Somali, in every part of the country. His strength should emanate from whether or not he's capable of creating jobs for the youth, mm -hmm. not whether he's capable of threatening, threatening the use of force in public. That's absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And if he thinks what matters to him is whether he looks weak if he says okay to Tigray's demands, then he's, he's, in, he's, he's in for disappointment because there is nothing that's going to stand in the way of Tigray holding elections, whether they like it or not. But I would advise, I would, as a, an erstwhile friend, I would advise him, this is not a matter of wounding his pride or not. In fact, he would look stronger if he uh, comes to terms with the fact that there are election are thing, things like elections are the most normal things to do for a re, for, for a support reformer like him. So it, it shouldn't be considered an attack on his pride, mm -hmm. an attack on his leadership. He would rather look strong if he admits that there is, in fact, a leadership crisis, and that it requires working together, puts our heads, putting our heads together. But to the constitutional right to do so. That is what constitutional right? Constitution, the constitution clearly provides for the right to election. For Are the United asking? States? Of course. Mm. Well, I mean, well, uh, you want to walk me through the technicalities no, that okay, people want okay, to come up okay. with? No. Mm. Tigray has a hard won right to self-government. Mm. Nothing and no one can and should stand in the way of that hard won right. I mean, Tigray does have a right to secede from, from I mean, to, to secede from the Federation if it wants to, but that's not the TPLF's intention. That's not the, the intention of the people of Tigray. Mm -hmm. Even secession is an option, for God's sakes. Let alone election, which is so clearly United, stipulated in so the Constitution. So do have uh, the right to sub, I mean, to that extent, you mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, why, why should it be ahead of the federal government for Tigray to hold elections? 
The question is, well, if, if Abiy was more interested in the safety of uh, the people of Tigray, I think the most normal thing for him to do would be, okay, we could make a phone call to Dr. De Brazion. And he said, okay, do you think it's a good idea? Well, if you think it's a good idea, we'll, we'll, we'll be more than glad to, to lend our support. That, too, that should have been the most normal thing to do. But like I said, he attached unnecessary personal, uh, personal uh, issue to the, uh, the question of whether or, or not Tigray is holding elections. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that, that is the, um, the, the devil in the detail. It's not oh, the fact of Tigray holding elections that is, uh, that is being considered an issue. Mm -hmm. My guess is he thinks he would look weak unless he reigns Tigray in. That's another case. People in Oromia, people in Amhara have issues against his government. The most normal thing for him is to address those issues. Not try to silence Tigray, not try to sow the kind of violence that, that, that is becoming uh, prevalent in many parts of the country in Tigray. In fact, the government media, government sponsored campaign is being orchestrated to, to, to extend the signs of violence in other many, prevalent in many parts of the country, uh, also in Tigray. Orchestrated by? By PP, I mean, it's an obvious campaign. Mm. Government media is, is, is coming, up, uh, coming up with all kinds of apocryphal stories about uh, violence is happening here and there in Tigray. Mm. If anything, they want to impose what we know for a fact is a figment of their imagination on Tigray, so other people would also say to themselves, okay, well, it's not just us who are, who are having problems. Tigray is also ha having problems. That kind of thinking is, is where you, you, you see how, how critical the leadership failure is. So rather than addressing the, the, the prevalence of violence in many parts of the country, you want to create a parity of sorts among the regions by exporting that violence into Tigray as well. And that's not leadership. That's absolute irresponsibility. The height of uh, responsibility. By the way, you are labeling uh, this giant media at the center uh, to be uh, used by PP as a propaganda machinery? I don't have to label them. Mm -hmm. They are doing it at PP's behest. Practically, you mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, not practically. Everything is being engineered by the, the, the leaders of PP. The, 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 the head of the people included. So if he tells you he has no clue whatsoever what's happening in the media, and he is just, uh, I don't want to use lying, but uh, he's, he's, he's misrepresenting the facts. Mm -hmm. that's, 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 so my advice is you can, you can uh, be part of uh, Tigray's success and come out as strong at the same time. Mm -hmm. But if you think Tigray's success is going to make you look weak, you'll continue to be weak anyway, mm -hmm. and that's not going to stand in the way of Tigray's success as far as uh, it's concerned. So mm -hmm. you, you should, I think that's what you should uh, consider. But how could you, from the very beginning, uh, decide such a decision in the presence of uh, such a I mean, pandemic? Uh, the, the such pandemic, we have uh, transport uh, services mm. in the presence of uh, corona, right? Mm. <coughs> corona, we are the first to, to take measures mm. in, in, the, in the country. We impose a state of emergency and we are doing everything uh, the party structure, the government structure from high above all the way down to uh, the Wahyo, the Tabi level, Kabul level, is fully engaged in addressing this, this, uh, this concern. So the level of precaution that's required is even easier uh, in the case of holding elections uh, than in maintaining a smooth running of uh, transport services in, in the region. So we're not going to hold elections in the stadium. We're not going to hold elections in a manner in town hall meetings or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can take all the precautions necessary uh, 
uh, to, to prevent uh, Corona uh, because we, we owe it to our people. And uh, hold elections at the same time. I mean, I'm not going to give you specifics of what we plan to do and everything, but uh, if it is doable in other parts of uh, the world, there is no reason why it's not doable here. Mm -hmm. Because if you really assume uh, Abiy and company decided to, uh, to postpone elections because of Corona, mm -hmm. and then obviously we, we're not on the same page. That's another case. Mm -hmm. Corona was used as a, 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 a very... Uh, you mean cover up? Uh, yeah, a very good excuse. Mm -hmm. Not, I mean, not so good, but a, a, a convenient excuse mm -hmm. to, to, to carry out their, their long-held plans to postpone elections indefinitely. Uh, what makes uh, you, uh, by you, as I told you previously, I mean TPLF? No problem. And the people of Tigray, uh, different from the rest of the nations and nationalists of Ethiopia, because it's you who have been uh, voicing in defense of the uh, constitution, right? Constitutional order. Yes. Uh, and you said, of course, uh, earlier, Tigray has a hard-won right uh, yes. to self-determination, right? What makes you different from the rest? Well, well, we, we're, well we're different in the sense that mm. we're, in, we're Tigray. Mm. Tigray has its own, its, its own people. It's, well, we, Amhara is unique. Is different from Oromia. But as far as self government rights concerned, we are no different from Oromia. We are no different from. Uh, what I mean is, what is that hard won right to self determination? It's a hard won right for Oromo, Oromos too. Oh, so it's the same for all nations, nationalities. Well, whether the, the leadership in Oromia mm -hmm. decides to hold elections is their own, their own issue. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to impose this on them. So the, if they stick to the plans of the federal government, mm -hmm. because they are the same party, PP. Mm -hmm. The PP is now cheerleading, not for democracy, but for an authoritarian rule led by one individual. Mm -hmm. And Tigray would have none of it. Uh, th that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Tigray has TPLF, not a PP. So there are so-called Tigray PP members who are cheerleading for Prime Minister Abiy to, to, to I mean, to, hey, they are now singing Hail the King. <laughs> Already, I mean, the people are telling us he deserves to be uh, a reigning monarch for the next thousand years. Mm -hmm. It could it could sound like a joke, but it's not a joke. It, it, there there are actually efforts being put into realizing that ambition. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Tigray would not, would have none of this authoritarian ambitions. Okay, it's not about being unique, Tigray, because we are in charge of Tigray. Because we are in charge of people who have paid de dearly for their self-government self rights, we will not compromise on that self-government rights. This is what we are saying. We are not saying Oromos would compromise on their rights. They will not compromise on their rights. But the, I'm, I'm pretty sure they will not compromise on their rights. But the leadership in Oromo obviously is ready to compromise on that right. So it, it, it remains for political forces of Oromo who really feel strongly about those rights to, to mount pressure in favor of uh, their self-government right. But it is not for Tigray or for TPLF to lead this, this, this challenge. As far as we're concerned, we are mounting our challenge because if holding elections is tantamount to challenging Dr. Abi's ambitions to remain in power forever, so be it. I'm proud of it. Because we didn't fight against dictatorial rule for nearly two decades to only be uh, ushering in uh, an embryonic dictatorship in the form of uh, uh, prosperity or Abi Ahmed. So we, could, we should, I mean, it's not about being unique. It is simply about having a leadership that doesn't want to compromise on the most fundamental interest of its people. Mm -hmm. More importantly, the case, in, in this particular case, our self-government right. As you said, uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has uh, previously uh, declared that uh, his government is, uh, I mean, has finalized uh, every preparation uh, to take action against such regional states with such an intention to hold election at regional state level. So where do you think this 
would take the country? I, I think I addressed that question earlier. Yeah, of course, you touched it a bit. But yes. Yeah. For a leader who has illegally extended his stay on power to threaten the use of force against a region that is vowing to take its constitutional rights seriously, is probably unheard of. It's pro at the most, it, that's, that's the height of the responsibility. Whether or not he's going to make good, make good on that threat, like I said earlier, let's cross the bridge when you come to it. Mm. That's, not, th that's the list of my worries. My worry is that there is a so-called reformer who, is, who was being praised to the skies by the Western capitals as, as being the poster child of reform coming out swinging and threatening to use force against this, a regional state that, that simply said it would do the most normal things any functioning, functioning state does, holding elections. Mm -hmm. So if you have a reformer, quote unquote, who have such authoritarian proclivities to the point of using, threatening the use of force against people who do normal state functions such as holding elections, and then uh, we're in trouble. That doesn't bode well to the, uh, to the country. That much is clear. What will transpire, in fact, is, 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 is a totally different matter. Mm. You see, I mean, for, for uh, people, for uh, the security defense apparatus to be used as a service of uh, someone's uh, authoritarian ambitions, uh, that is, is something we'll never countenance. When fingers crossed, uh, things will not come to that. Mm. But no matter <coughs> what, nothing is going to stand in the way of Tigray's resolve to hold elections because this is something the people of Tigray have uh, paid dearly for. And uh, they will never allow that right to be compromised uh, by any party or any individual, no matter what their positions are. So, like I said, whether or not that trait uh, will, will, will materialize, let's cross the bridge when we come to it. Okay, uh, there is a widespread rumor that uh, some external forces have played a key role in paving the way that took Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed to the National Palace. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to spe speculate on anything. Mm. All I can tell you, yes, there are b b powers, but as far as we're concerned, I voted for him too, okay? Mm. 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 You yourself, you voted? Oh yeah, I'm mm. a member of the PRD, right? okay. executive committee. Mm. No, look, we can come up with all kinds of stories. Mm. I know for a fact his, 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 he had support from, from Western capitals. What was, what was the motive behind? What do you think it was? No, I don't want to speculate on okay. the motive okay. behind. Okay. Uh, so what, what we know is we're hoping he would make good on the promise PRDF executive committee made when it decided to, to reform itself. But rather than heeding the very reform agenda of PRDF, he obviously came up with a checklist of things that probably was given to him by his handlers in the West. But uh, it's, my, my guess is as good as yours. Okay, so uh, as this regard, you have uh, in your previous statement uh, called upon the international institutions, just like IGAD, the African Union, the United Nations, right, uh, to play uh, their share or role based on concrete evidences and knowledge, right? What was the message uh, that you compared to these international institutions or the international community? Uh, could you please elaborate that to our viewers? Look, um, our message is clear. Mm. Uh, Ethiopia embarked on a new constitutional, federal political dispensation, mm. 1991, 1994, 1997. The exercise, the ride has not been particularly smooth. There have been tremendous achievements economically, politically. But it was still had a long way to go before, mm -hmm. before we could achieve the level of uh, confidence that should come with 
the creation of a very vibrant society. Now, now our achievements in, in economic performance are being eroded. Mm. The economy is being mismanaged. Uh, politics have run amok, and in fact, violence has become the norm in many parts of the country. Mm. Uh, power is increasingly being concentrated in the in the hands of one individual, mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, uh, his understanding of what it means to have absolute control is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, he has a very uh, uh, solid control of the the media narrative of sorts, mm -hmm. but his grip on the actual uh, reality on the ground is, is very shaky at best. Uh, Ethiopia is a very important country. Uh, unbridled ambitions of individuals to hold on to power no matter what shouldn't be allowed to, to, to disintegrate this country. So our, our message is clear, and we, we, we want to play our uh, fair share uh, to avoid the disintegration of the country. We'll do everything in our power. One of the things we uh, should do is to hold elections. This is the most normal thing, the most natural thing to do. Mm -hmm. So our message to the international community uh, is that uh, what is happening in Addis Ababa the leadership, what the leadership of Abiy Ahmed is doing, is 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 not doesn't bode well to the region at large. I mean, Ethiopia is a very important country, about 100 plus million people. Mm -hmm. So anything that happens in this country has far-reaching repercussions on mm -hmm. the peace and stability of the region. Um, I know uh, PP leader Abiy Ahmed likes to to uh, flaunt his kumbaya diplomacy here and there. He wants to uh, make people shake hands, uh, embrace each other in public, and uh, let bygones be bygones. But the, 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 the reality in the region is so complex. Such kinds of uh, naive exercises of uh, peacemaking uh, <laughs> will probably add more to the tension than uh, help solve the or existing ones. So the, the most important issue for the international community to realize is that this is not, it's not uh, a misunderstanding over the nature and content of the reform that was being undertaken. Not at all. Nobody, no one is against reform. TPLF, as part of the EPRDF, resolved to undertake reforms and of course to uh, make up for the very mistakes that uh, gave rise to the discontent of our uh, our people uh, at all levels. So it's not about the content and the the, the, the nature of the, the, the well. The, we have differences on the nature of about the nature of uh, reform, but at least it's not about it's not a, an issue of haggling over the details of reform. No, it's just a question of whether. Uh, the multinational federal arrangement, which is holding the nation together, should be given uh, uh, more chance, uh, or whether a unitary arrangement that is hand tailored to the demands of one individual, uh, because this such an arrangement, hand tailored to suit the demands of one individual or one party, is going to. Uh, precipitate the crisis in this country to such an extent that, an extent that um, totally uncalled for decisions uh, could be made uh, if, uh, for example, uh, the PP leadership makes a, mis a miscalculation that they, they are capable of containing uh, regional demands through force, mm -hmm. uh, then that would, they would, they will have decided, by the time they do that, they will have decided to, to preside over the disintegration of the country in Ireland. Of course, most of the uh, work needed to, 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 to do the finishing touch to the, this disintegration process have already been done. But the international community should wake up to the fact that this, what is at stake is 
not just the reform, the nature of the reform or the content of the reform, but the very existence of the state itself. That's why we, we took it upon ourselves to, to at least communicate to the international community that the, threat, the, 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 the crisis in this country should be really looked at uh, for what it is than what uh, the, the international media often uh, try to port portray it. Uh, uh, it's not a question of one group standing for reform and another standing against. That's that's far from far from uh, the truth. What do you think would be the worst case scenario if the existing situation continues the way it is now? I have never been a, a pernicious optimist, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I have had uh, um, a level of optimism uh, that will pull some some magic off that somehow could avert a crisis. But unfortunately, I'm not uh, that optimistic now. Uh, if if we continue to assume that uh, uh, PP and its leadership uh, are uh, only making mistakes in the process of um, realizing good intentions, we will we, we'll be in for disappointment. Obviously, there is a much more sinister principle at work than just... Um, uh, rookie, a rookie prime minister and his his close quarter of uh, uh, comrades making mistakes along 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 the way. No, there is an evil design that should have been revealed for what it is, uh, and it's still it is still possible for the people of Ethiopia and uh, for uh, political elites who are sincerely interested in the interests of uh, the people uh, to come to put their heads together uh, and stop this madness that is leading uh, the country into further and further, f I mean, f leading the country further and further into chaos. Um, like I said, uh, Unfortunately, there is little uh, substance to support any optimistic uh, view of what tomorrow has in store for us as far as uh, the Ethiopian state is concerned. Let me give you one more chance uh, in case you have something that you would like to add uh, because I have already finished uh, the questions that I have for today or for the time being, of course. No, uh, I will be good. No problem. Thank you very much indeed uh, once again for being the guest of this program. My pleasure.